many species are making a return to Britain, but one species has remained on the sidelines and was lost in living memory. A secretive and misunderstood bottom dweller, I've come to Woolerton Hall in Nottingham to see one of the few preserved specimens left in England. This is a burbot, and it was caught out of the River Trent in Nottingham in the early 1900s. These fish are a member of the cod family, but unusual for them, they live in fresh water. Now there hasn't been a confirmed sighting of a burbot in the UK since 1969, and that was from the River Cam. They have an eastern flowing river distribution from the rivers of South Yorkshire, like the Derwent and the Ewes, Midland rivers like the Trent and the Witham, and southern rivers like the Cam and the Wissey. The chances of burbots still being found in the UK are slim to none. You've got more chance of finding Bigfoot in Tesco. However, just over the English Channel, they're still there. I'm heading to Brussels, Belgium, to the Research Centre for Aquatic Fauna, where they do have a breeding programme. I've driven over to see Berber in the flesh. These fish, although not found in the UK anymore, have a wide distribution globally, from Canada, Alaska, Mongolia, and into Western Europe. They feed on small fish and invertebrates, and tend to stay hidden away during the day, venturing out at night to hunt. They can reach a weight of 25 pounds, but British specimens were typically under six pounds. If you look when burbot disappeared in British rivers in the 1960s, rivers were little more than open sewers and chemical dumps. The other factor is habitat loss. Burbot like large river systems with connectivity to floodplains and wetlands, something we've largely altered. You see burbot spawn on these floodplains, so in draining the wetlands and fens, we've stripped the burbot of their nursery. One common misconception is the UK is too warm for them now, but a feasibility study done by the University of Southampton found no issues with UK weather for spawning, and certainly in countries like France, Germany, Denmark and Belgium, with similar weather to our own, they breed fine. They prefer a water temperature of 4 degrees Celsius for spawn, but eggs have hatched as high as 7 degrees Celsius. There is no evidence that they have to breed under ice, which is another myth. The fry rise up in the water, letting the current take them, and allowing them to spread into other lakes and rivers. In the summer, they can tolerate temperatures up to 27 degrees Celsius, though tend to hide away in deeper parts of the river or lake when it gets that warm. Okay, so this is the uh, facility. And I don't know if you can see in there, all those little dots are baby burbot. Very, very small. And they said they'd leave some burbot out. Bearing in mind, I haven't seen a burbot for 15 years. There we go, wow. Oh, so cool. Hey there. That one's pretty chunky. That one's like, you know, the size of my hand. These guys are little babies. Wow. So the big question, could Berber ever be released back into England? Well, I certainly hope so. We've lost this fish in living memory. We certainly still have issues in our rivers, with hundreds of tonnes of raw sewage being pumped into them, abstraction taking away water from them, barriers to migration, and agricultural and industrial runoff. But compared to the 1960s, water quality is still much better. Burbot are actually not that delicate of fish in terms of water quality, it's just the water was so bad we lost lots of species in rivers, like salmon, trout and pike. But these fish could recolonise on their own, or be stocked by anglers, once water quality improved. Burbot had little angling value, and was small in numbers when we lost them, so had no way to come back on their own. Brown trout and pike are actually more sensitive to pollution than burbot, so if they can live in a river, so can burbot. The first steps are bringing them over to the UK and try breeding them in a facility much like this. One saving grace 
is that they're relatively easy to breed and produce a lot of offspring, up to 1 million eggs per female. There is of course also the option to release them into arc sites, much like what we do with native white clawed crayfish into large lakes and tributaries of rivers that have less pressures where they can make a start. Where Berber are present, they've also been shown to target invasive species like topmouth gudgeon and signal crayfish, reducing the damage they do to the wider ecosystem. It's not going to be easy, but hopefully this secretive and in my own humble opinion, beautiful fish could make a comeback. If you enjoyed this video, I've also done a podcast on the subject which goes into way more detail about their history in England and the reintroduction to try and bring them back. You can find a link to that in the description. You can check out some other videos in the links here. Also check out my website and social media, as well as the podcast that I host, the Bearded Tits Podcast. Cheers.